Nain Mananda. I am Dr. Ramesh Vaita, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, we are going to discuss regarding the case studies. In ground improvement techniques, what kind of practical issues we are understanding in different scenarios. So, in this particular lecture, we are discussing about the that Suvarnabhumi airport in Bangkok. So, that what kind of properties are involved in that construction, what kind of soil it has, what kind of laboratory tests are we conducted, what is the procedure we follow for getting the desired properties for getting these, for construction of this project. So, in this case study, we are understanding the pre-loading and vertical drains for soft clay improvement at Suvarnabhumi Airport, Bangkok, Thailand. So, in this, in this Suvarnabhumi Airport, it is one of the largest international airports in Southeast Asia, which was constructed on site while significant geo geotechnical challenges. So, where they selected the government, Thailand government, they selected that particular locality based on their needs and requirements. In that particular locality where they are, uh, they, where they need this airport, so in that particular area is having some, geo, has facing some significant geotechnical challenges. So, the primary concern was the presence of P players of the soft clay. So, those land is soft clay which posed a risk of excessive settlement under the weight under the weight of airport infrastructure, including runways, taxis, terminal buildings, whatever the air, 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 airport atmosphere is required, those are all are involved in this risk factor. So the risk factor is this settlement. So the, based on this settlement, so under under the weight of the airport infrastructure, including the runways, taxis, and etc. So, to address the issue, a combination of preloading and vertical drains was employed as a ground improvement strategy. So, here, these vertical drains and preloading, how we are understanding is the parameter we have to understand in this particular case study. In this, soft clay characteristics, potential risk, what are they, what are the things we are going to understand, what are the various properties involved in this particular so, locality. So, how we are overcome all those challenges? What is the procedure we follow? These are the parameters which we are involved in this particular case study. So, in this, the first thing is soft clay characteristics. So, it means high compressibility, low permeability are the parameters which are involved in these characteristics. So, in this, the soft clay layers, whenever we are understanding the soft clay layers, the site were highly compressible. They could be undergo some, whenever we are applied low, it is going to deform. Those kind of situations we are understand. So, in this, both immediate and long term settlement may happen. So, it may damage the structure and impair the functionality of the airport. So, how we are going, this is the one of the important challenge which we faced in this particular case study. Soft clay characteristics. So, the soft clay layers, they are highly impermissible in this particular thing. So, in this, whenever we are applying the loads, whatever the different loads, it may affect immediately as well as long term effectivity is also involved in this soft clay characteristics. In this low permeability, the soft clay had low permeability, it is slowing the natural process of water explosion under load and which is crucial for consolidation. So, the characteristic meant that without intervention, the settlement would occur slowly over an extended period, potentially causing differential settlement. So, in this potential risks, differential settlement, uneven settlement across this site could lead to cracking and distortion of runways and taxis, disputing airport operations. Prolonged consolidation time without ground improvement, the natural consolidation process could take decays. So, delaying the airport construction timeline. So, it depends what kind of challenges we are facing. According to that, we are going to choose the 
what type of technique ground improvement technique is helpful in some of the processes without without considering these kind of ground improvement technique the natural consolidation process may took long time so that much long period is not acceptable so we we need the construction so based on the practical things we as as in our keep it in our uh, understanding those practicality and ground reality about that particular construction work and necessity of that work these are all the parameters which we are going to undergo then we understand what kind of technique is suitable for that particular requirement in this particular case study case study we are going to understand the soft clay characteristics are there it means those high current compressibility and permeability properties are going to affect so we require those kind of techniques here the risks are settlement so the uneven settlements it leads so many damages to the construction work in different ways the two in airports runways different kind of environment is there in airports because terminals are different terminals terminals means the buildings where the passengers can move uh, for departures and arrivals and runways where the huge planes are going to land and land landing and take off is happening in their own speed of that particular aero airplane weight and everything is involved in that so each kind has their own kind of different properties and so and this how much wind wind power so many factors are involved in that runways and coming to the outside number of taxis number of passengers they are going to move using those kind of parking facilities and everything is involved in this airport different kinds of construction work is involved there is no more same type of construction work is not going to happen different types of works are going to happen these are all we have to understand these challenges we are going to face in this in this the solution so based on these a compressibility and low permeability we are going to consider this now the pre loading with vertical drains is the solution we are going to consider for this because this pre loading the purpose which is involved it is that is the we are applying a temporary surcharge load usually higher than the actual load the ground will ev ev how much it is going to eventually it is bare so it means to accelerate the soil consolidation so we face the challenge is nothing but the consolidation so for this to accelerate the soil consolidation the pre loading involves so for the temporary surcharge load so to, the external load increases the effectiveness in the soil driving out pore water more quickly and causing the soil to consolidate faster so this is the purpose we are choosing this pre loading in in this implementation for this particular case study that is swarnabhumi airport in that a thick layer of sand or soil was placed over the construction site as the surcharge load this pre load where was left in place for several months to allow the soil to consolidate the desired degree before construction commencement so before the construction or we are going to implement for this we do the what are the necessary calculations for this for getting the desired properties of the soil using this solution this technique whenever we are using that is pre loading so in this we are going to implement before starting the construction work it gives the this pre load what we done for this is a thick layer of so sand or soil was placed over the construction site as the surcharge load now this pre load was left in place for several months to allow the soil to consolidate and to get the desired uh, it is ready for the construction work next step so for that we are wait and we are implementing like that now move on to these vertical drains these vertical drains are also known as wing drains so here we are using these for the consolidation process so these vertical drains are also known as wing drains they are used to expedite the consolidation process by providing a pathway of water to escape from the soil more quickly we are providing the facility to escape the water from the soil so it is more quick when we are choosing this kind of geotechnical technique so we use this kind of technique it gives the 
we choose because of the depends upon the characteristic we choose this vertical drain technique to escape from the soil more quickly by shortening the drainage path vertical drains reduce the time required for the consolidation so now we are implementation the vertical drains were installed in a grid pattern across the site with the spacing typically ranging from 1 to 3 meters so these vertical drains were installed in a grid pattern across the site with the spacing typically ranging from 1 to 3 meters these drains were made of synthetic materials and were installed using so in this we are using different kinds of materials so those where these drains were made using these synthetic materials synthetic materials and were installed using these mandrel which draw them into the ground to fill the depth of of the soft clay layer so this is the purpose and we implementing like this the using this vertical drain techniques so in this pre loading and vertical drains we are combining so the process the combination of pre loading and vertical drains was particularly effective the pre load creating a driven force of for water to expel from the clay so it create driving force for water to expel from the clay where the vertical drain significantly shorten the drainage path allowing the rapid dissipation of excess cold pressure this approach accelerated the consolidation process reducing the settlement time from years to months it reduces the settlement so naturally we left to means it it takes so many years once we choose this technique for uh, for getting the desired properties so it reduces the settlement time so the combination the both preloading and vertical drains combination it is going to reduce it is effective because it reducing the timeline so timeline reducing it's helpful for the starting the construction work so for proceeding the construction so it is helpful now in this the monitoring so in the overall throughout the preloading period settlement plates and piezometers were used to monitor the progress of consolidation these instruments provide real time data on the rate of settlement and the dissipation of the pore pressure allow engineers to determine the sufficient consolidation had occurred so these based on these what we understand based on the geotechnical challenges depends upon the what type of soil it is according to the which type of soil it is what kind of characteristics they have our properties type of soil and properties what kind of properties are there based on the construction what type of construction project we are doing based on the project we are going to choose the technique which technique is suitable for that so these are all interlinked so according to that in these geotechnical challenges according to the soft clay so the compressibility and low permeability all the parameters so in this the risk is the settlement so using this preloading as well as the vertical drains are the techniques and combined we are getting the based on the less timeline we are getting the desired property property for construction the project these are the factors which we are going to understand we monitor all these things now we are moving to the technical issues and considerations so in this particular case study soil behavior prediction so any type the soil behavior prediction is the most challenging one here we are predicting the behavior of the soft clay under pre load conditions required so detailed geotechnical investigation including soil sampling laboratory testing and in situ testing example cone penetration test cpt test so this is the challenge so first we have to understand the soil we are we have to collect where we are going to construct that project take from there and we are doing the so we are collecting the soil sample we are conducting the laboratory test then we will understand the what are the properties involved in that particular soil according to that we choose the technique and according to that we proceed the uh, for getting the desired properties what procedure gives the best result according to that we are going to choose so here predicting the behavior of the soft clay under preload conditions 
So required this geotechnical investigation. Detailed geotechnical investigation gives the better understanding about the soil conditions to know about the various properties. Properties. Geotechnical investigation gives the better understanding about the soil properties. For this, we may choose any kind of test. So collect the sample and according to the requirement, choose the test. So finally, what kind of solution is gives the better understanding about the things. So here the solution advanced numerical modeling and empirical correlations was used to estimate the consolidation behavior. So here taking into the account factors such as soil stratigraphy and initial void ratio and compressibility. So these are the things which we have to know about from using the soil sample as well as the laboratory tests. So various laboratory tests which we are going to conduct for getting these soil stratigraphy and initial void ratio and compressibility. So this is the challenge. So to know about the soil prediction behavior, those are these are the factors. That is soil stratigraphy. Initial voids, initial void ratio, and compressibility. So, soil stratigraphy, initial void ratio, and compressibility. So, these are the parameters which we are going to understand to know about the to getting the desired uh, for required for desired properties. For getting the required properties of the soil, we have to understand the and we know about the soil behavior in these terms. Now, drain spacing optimization. So, we choose this challenge, the efficiency of the vertical drains. So, vertical drains are highly depending on their spacing. So, too wide a spacing would slow down the consolidation process, while too close spacing would be uneconomical. So, like this. So, whatever we do, we have to keep in our mind as a civil engineer that is safe and economic. These are the factors we have to keep in our mind, whatever the thing we are going to do. So, here the efficiency vertical drains are the technique which we choose for getting the desired consolidation process for doing the, the, the consolidation process. Here, for this, the efficiency is vertical drains is highly depend upon their spacing. So, once we choose wide spacing, it slows down the consolidation process. It affects the timeline of the, how, how much time is there, how much time we calculated for completion of this process. It affected the timeline. If while we choose to close spacing, it would be uneconomic. So, it may affect the project cost. These are the parameters we have to balance. So here this is the challenge which we faced. In this the solution is geotechnical analysis and cost benefit studies were conducted to determine the optimal spacing that balanced technical efficiency with economical feasibility. This is the parameter which we have to understand. So here as per technical, technically rich means we need close spacing that gives technically it's rich because the consolidation is uh, more whenever the close spacing is there. So it is technically strong. Coming to the economical point of view, it huge. It affect the cost. So spacing too wide is economically good it may be, but it affect the technical point. In this challenge, so using this geotechnical analysis and cost-based studies were conducted to determine the optimum Spacing that balance with both technical efficiency as well as the economic feasibility. So the chosen space ensured rapid consolidation while minimizing the number of drains required. So like that we are understanding, we are done the drain spacing optimization. In the same, the settlement and pore pressure monitoring. So here challenging, so ensuring the 
Pre-loading and drainage system was effective, required continuous monitoring of settlement and poor pressure to detect any unexpected behavior such as non-uniform settlement or insufficient poor pressure dissipation. So this is the challenge which we face under the settlement and the poor pressure monitoring. So here the solution, so we are ensured that the pre-loading in the drainage system was effective, required continuous monitoring of the settlement and poor pressure to detect any unexpected behavior such as un, non-uniform settlement. So it may happen, it depends. So it understand once we are doing the continuous monitoring of the settlement. For this, the solution in a, a network of monitoring instruments were deployed across the site. Settlement plates measure surface settlement by PGO meters, track changes in port pressure at various depths. Here, what is the solution for these kind of challenges which we face in our site. So this is the solution which may consider that is a network monitoring institute will deployed across the site. The settlement plates measure surface settlement. We choose the settlement plates and we are going to measure surface settlement while PGO meter track it changes in pore pressure at various depths. Data from these instruments were regularly analyzed to confirm that the ground was consolidated as expected or not. So because may happen non-uniform settlements also it affect the work. This is one of the challenge which we which may face. So for this type of thing, so in monitoring we have to use these kind of instrument for understanding the continuous monitoring, regularly analyzing to confirm the ground was consolidated as what we expected. So these are the things we have to understand. Now, in this pre-loading considerations, here, once the pre-load was removed, there was a risk of rebound or behave where the ground could swell slightly due to the reduction in the load. So post pre-loading considerations, this is the one of the challenge once the pre-load was removed. So there was a risk of rebound or where the ground could swell slightly due to the reduction in the loading. So once we done this preloading, so this once once we removed this preloading, it is a there is a chance of risk of this to reduction the load. So slightly it is going to swell. So in this what we the solution is to mitigate this the preload was removed gradually. So once we did it rapidly it may affect slightly, it may swell due to the reduction of the load. So, the preload was removed gradually and the ground was monitored to ensure that any rebound was within excess acceptable limits. So, little it will done. Definitely, the rebound happened within the limits. It is, is it okay? We have to ensure within the limit, the acceptable limits, it is there or not, we have to monitor. So, in some areas, additional measures such as light fill or controlled construction sequencing were used to manage post preloading concentrations. These are the things we have to ready to face the challenges in the post preloading concentrations. Once we are going to remove this, we have to carefully monitor and the re rebound happened within the acceptable, to acceptable limits or not. In some areas, additional measures are also required such as lightweight fill or controlled construction sequencing was used to manage post preloading concentrations. Now, in this outcome and impact, reduction in long term settlement, stability and safety, cost and time efficiency, environmental considerations. So here, the reduction in long term, the outcome is the impact. What is the impact? What we understand that is the reduction in long term settlement. The combination of preloading and vertical drying significantly reduced the potential for long term settlement. So by accelerating this consolidation process, the, the soil was brought to the stable state before the airport's construction minimizing the risk of the differential settlement. The settlement may not be happened the equal throughout the soil, throughout the site, it may same. So the very, the differential settlement is there. So we are going to minimize this differential settlement before starting the airport construction. So we are going to get the soil bought to the 
stable. So by accelerating the consolidation process, by combination of these preloading and vertical drain significantly reduce the potential for long term settlement. Now stability and safety, the ground improvement technique assured the stability of the airport's critical infrastructure including runways, taxiways and terminal buildings. The reduced settlement risk translated to a safer operational environmental for the airport. And the cost and time efficiency although the preloading and vertical drains added upfront costs and time to the project. They ultimately saved significant time because naturally we left over the soil site for getting the settlement and everything without uh, without any kind of ground improvement techniques we are using. It's too, it is not completed within the timeline. So the time is important factor and money by preventing future maintenance issues and structural damage that could have arisen from uncontrolled settlement. So in this point of view, we have to understand this cost and time efficiency is there in this kind of technical, geotechnical ground improvement techniques we may, may provide that gives the what are the desired property of the soil as well as the without using these kind of techniques, the property it may desired property. So if we are not using these kind of geotechnical techniques for getting the desired properties, it may affect the whole project sometimes it may more damage when compared to how much cost we spend for these techniques are very very less when compared to the loss of the final structure. So without using these, with using uh, techniques, without using geotechnical techniques, ground improvement techniques that made the major difference and also the time also very very important parameter. So naturally we are doing what kind of maybe line of drain of the water from the soil, it took lots of time. So it, we are whenever we are adopted for the adopted and the required technique, geotechnical ground improvement technique for getting the desired property. So within the timeline it gives the time efficiency also. In this environmental concentration, the use of vertical drains and preloading is considered a, a, a environmental friendly and compared to the other ground improvement methods. So in this what type of soil we choose or sand or gravel we choose for getting this preloading concept. So that is the, uh, that gives the environmental impacts for these considerations. So here we choose maximum as per the what is the desired property of the soil according to that we choose under the environmental consideration. So environmental friendly when compared to the other ground improvement methods that might require extensive use of the cement or chemicals. The process relates largely on the natural consolidation of the soil within minimal environmental impact. So these are the parameters which are going to understand in this particular consideration in this particular case what we understand. And now when evaluating these uh, Swarnabhumi airport ground improvement project from an environmental perspective, so many key factors are involved into play. So ground improvement techniques like preloading with vertical drains can have both positive and negative environmental impacts. So here based on these environmental impacts we talking about this case study extensions in environmental point of view. In this some positive environmental impacts are there. Here minimizing the long term environmental impact. So prevention of infrastructure failure. So the primary purpose of ground improvement was to stabilize the soil and prevent to excessive settlement. So it means without using these kind of means it, they, it is not preventive and it is going to the settlement of that particular project work, it may affect the damage the construction work. So without such measures, the potential failure of infrastructure could lead to significant environmental harm such as soil erosion, contamination from damaged fuel tanks or, or runoff from broken drainage systems. So by ensuring the long term stability of the airport infrastructure, the project reduced the risk of such environmental hazards. So this is this one kind of positive environmental impact inside positive side. So here what we understand the settlement 
so to prevent the excess settlement without such measures the potential failure of infrastructure it includes the significant environmental harm soil erosion is going to happen in this soil erosion it may cause so many different uh, modifications properties are going to change and also the contamination from damaged fuel tanks so it gives the so much of environmental disturbance for that particular locality and also it in, in, it may induce it into the soil so it gives a different properties and it may lead to the some more some more different issues we are going to face and are run off from broken drainage systems so the water what whatever the water table which is nearby is, is also affected because it may happen because of the broken drainage system by ensuring this long term stability of the airport infrastructure the project reduce the such environmental hazards without using these drainage systems the water may it is going to the polluted in, in so many ways so like that we are going to understand this minimizing the long term environmental impact effect and reduction in further remediation needs so by preventively stabilizing the ground the need of the further remediation which often involves more invasive construction activities and potential land degradation was minimized so this proactive approach contributed to less environmental disturbance over the life span of the airport once we compared with the overall life span of the airport overall life span of the airport so this is the very less environmental disturbance when compared to the what are the things what are the advantages we are considering from this process so in this reduction in future remediation needs is the less environmental disturbance over the life span of the when we compare with this this airport now use of lower impact techniques here in this particular case study we consider low impact techniques low impact techniques vertical drains as an environmental friendly option so the use of vertical drain is generally considered low impact ground improvement techniques unlike other various ground improvement methods that are rely on heavy chemical additives or extensive excavation vertical drains accelerate the natural consolidation process of the soil this minimizes the introduction of the foreign materials into the environment and reduces the overall ecological footprint of the projects so once we choose these vertical drains is itself as the one of the least environmental impact technique ground improvement least impact environment ground improvement technique this is the least impact environmental technique because this is the low impact ground improvement technique unlike the relay on heavy chemical additives so for we choose for this getting the vertical drains we choose another kind of techniques it may involve the chemical additives they are more effective uh, they are affecting the environment in different ways and the extensive excavation is also used in different number of environmental impacts they are going to reduce in so many ways so these vertical drains are the very least and less impact ground improvement techniques so it is very less impact to and these vertical drains accelerate the natural consolidation process of the soil this minimizes the introduction of the foreign materials into the ground improvement so we may choose another kind of ground improvement technique it may involve in the chemical additives it means different types of materials are involved different types of chemical process may pro, uh, involved in that particular soil it gives a different environmental effects to particular locality so here we use we choose these vertical drains it is going to be very red, less so here reduces the overall ecological footprint of the process now minimal use of the chemical stabilizers the project avoided or minimized the use of chemical stabilizers that could have potentially harmful environmental impacts this is particularly important in regions where the water table is high whenever the water table is high we may use chemical stabilizers it means it affect the ground water also so in that particular we are going to avoid these kind of chemical stabilizers that could 
potentially harmful the environmental effects so whenever the water table is high it may be any disturbances may cause because of these chemical stabilizers may involved in this water table or they may mix with this water table it give this so many disturbances so how for this water table where we are using these are the factors for getting those analysis and the contamination could spread quickly so these are the factors which are going to involved in this use low or uh, impact techniques in this water management and reduction of surface water contamination so here we choose to control water exploration by using these vertical drains the project facilitated the controlled explosion of pore water from the soil which was collected and managed appropriately this process helped to prevent the uncontrolled release of the potentially contaminated water into the surrounding environment reducing the risk of surface water and groundwater contamination so here because of the controlled water exploration using because of the uh, because of uh, we choose these vertical drains the project facilitated this controlled exploration of the pore water from the soil and which was collected managed and appropriately this process helped to prevent uncontrolled release of the potentially contaminated water into the surrounding environment we may choose other different methods it may contaminated so it may involved in the surrounding environment it increases the risk of the surface water and ground water contamination using these vertical drain technique ground improvement techniques this ground improvement technique is one of the method which is eco environmental friendly for the particular project so here erosion control so proper consolidation of the soil reduce the risk of erosion which could which could have lead to the sedimentation in nearby water bodies effective ground stabilization ensures that soil particles remain in place protecting local water resources from sedimentation so these are the controlled what are the erosion control what we understand in this particular thing now what are the negative impacts till now what we understand for which we use this technique so these are the positive notes which we understand these are the positive impacts minimizing the long term environmental impact so prevention of any failure and reduction in further remediation and also use of low impact technique because of these vertical drains minimize the chemical stabilization so in in terms of water management and reduction of surface contamination control water exploration and also erosion control and proper this may reduces the water contamination and also the to protect the local water resources so now using this any kind of technique it may affect something to the environment in this particular what are the negative environmental impacts for because of these techniques those are energy use and carbon print land use and hab ha habitat dis disruption potential of ground water impact so these are the things which we are going to understand in the environmental impacts in negative side in this construction related emissions the pre loading process involved in transporting and placing large quantities of fill material so we are doing using this technique that is surcharge load on site which is required significant energy and resulting in carbon emissions from construction machinery and transport vehicles so this means is this energy use and carbon footprint is somewhat it is environmentally affect so because of this preloading process involved in transporting and placing large quantities to fill material surcharge load on the site which is required significantly energy and release resulted in the carbon emissions from the construction machinery and transport vehicles in installation of vertical drains so the process so in vertical drains we choose technique that is equal to vertical drains so whenever we choose these ground improvement techniques these vertical drains the process which we are going to install so different types of installation methods are there it depends upon the locality and site and depends upon the site here wireless in 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 wise still involve the use of heavy equipment contributing the greenhouse gas emissions so because of these heavy machinery and heavy transportation because of these greenhouse effects we are going to face 
So those emissions we are going to understand because of this installation of the vertical drains. However, this impact is generally lower compared to the more invasive ground improvement techniques. It is less whenever compared to the remaining, even though it affects the environment in these vertical drains. So land use and habitat distribution in this large area equipment requirement. Here the construction itself it is huge because it is the airport. It means it requires large area. So the large scale preloading operation required extensive land use which could have temporarily uh, distributed local habitats. So the placement of surcharge load over the site might have displaced wildlife and altered local ecosystems. So it may disturb these ecosystems. It may be less than compared to the other techniques even though we are facing, we are, are uh, going to these kind of ecosystems effect is going to done because of these large scale preloading operation is required because of the heavy land use is involved in this type of projects. It depends upon the, every time it depends upon the type of soil and what type of uh, project this land use is depends upon these parameters. So based on that we choose because of the soft clay soil we choose and because of the airport construction it is the large scale operation is required. So it may affect those ecosystem. In this site disturbance, the installation of these vertical drains and the preloading process distribute the site potentially affecting the soil, microfauna, and flora. However, these effects are generally temporary and also the localized. So these kind of site disturbances, it depends upon the local. It's not completely in generally, we are not going to adopt these kind of impacts. So here the installation process and preloading process disturbances the site potentially affecting the soil and those particularly it impacts generally temporary and the local. So like that we are going to understand. So potential for groundwater impact, alteration and natural drainage parameters and risk of contamination, mobilization. So the installation of vertical drains could alter the natural drainage parameter patterns of the site because whenever we choose these natural drainage parameters, it took long term for getting the timeline based on the timeline. Long time when we choose these natural drainage parameter without vertical drains ground improvement techniques. So that is not a adaptable for construction works. Now we choose these. In this potentially affecting the local groundwater region. So this could have consequences for nearby the ecosystem that may rely on this specific groundwater conditions. So uh, how much care will you take even though we are getting the effective effect, effects will happen. Now risk of contaminated mobilization while the project aimed to control water exploration there was a potential risk of mobilizing contamination presence in the soil. Particularly if the site had any pre-existing contamination, the accelerated drainage could have facilitated the movement of these contaminated into the surrounding environmental if not properly managed. We are going to face these kind of contaminant mobilization. So these are the things which may affect the environmental point of view. And in these mitigation measures implemented, monitoring and environmental management in environmental monitoring, continuous monitoring of water quality, soil conditions and surrounding ecosystems. This depends upon the particular locality. These are, they are going to change site to site and place to place locality. It depends upon the locality. We have to understand that particular where we are going to construct that particular soil conditions, how for there only how much water table, any water kind relevant monitoring that water continuous and surrounding ecosystems was likely implemented to ensure that any negative environmental impacts were detected and managed promptly. This would have included testing for contaminants in the expelled pore water and monitoring changes in groundwater levels. So now control discharge, this project likely include measure to ensure that any water expelled through the vertical drains were treated or managed to prevent the contamination of nearby water bodies. This would have involved the use of sedimentation ponds or filtration systems to remove suspended solids or contaminants. In this re restoration and rehabilitation, 
Site restoration post construction after the ground improvement works were completed, the site was has to be restored to mitigate any temporary environmental impacts. This could include replanting vegetation, re-establishing habitats, and ensuring that any displaced wildlife was supported in returning to the area. Long-term environmental planning, the project likely incorporated long-term environmental management plans to monitor the site and surrounding areas for any delayed in environmental impacts. So this would ensure the area remains environmentally stable throughout the airport's operational life. In this, the ground improvement at Suvarnabhumi Airport through preloading at vertical dynes is a textbook example of effective geotechnical engineering by addressing the challenges posted by the soft clays. The project teams ensured the long-term stability and functionality of the world's busiest airports. This case study underscores the importance through geotechnical analysis, careful planning and the use of appropriate ground improvement techniques to overcome the challenges soil conditions in large scale construction projects. So from an environmental perspective, the Sevarabhumi Airport ground improvement project demonstrated a balance between the necessary civil engineering practices and as the environmental point of view, the technique chosen that is the preloading with vertical times were relatively low impact compared to the other ground improvement methods. So contributing the However, the long-term stability and the safety of the environment while minimizing the environmental harm, the project successes highlights the importance of the integrating environmental considerations into the large-scale civil engineering projects. So, ensuring the both infrastructure as well as the environment are to be protected. These are the various understandings which we are going to understand in this particular case study. What type of soil, what kind of what kind of techniques are required, what kind of challenges we are going to face because of these challenges, what kind of properties are impacted. So according to that, what are the implementations are involved because of this in monitoring what we understand, what are the technical issues involved in this particular thing, what kind of solutions are there. So according to that, what are the impacts we are understanding in that environmental point of view, what are the various factors which are going to impact these the parameters and how we overcome all those things. So finally, we will get for the both environment and infrastructure point of view, how we are ensuring the protect this. These are the parameters which we are understanding in this particular case study. Thank you. We will see in our next class. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.